39 years ago, the Sufre volcano incident erupted. Uh, it was Good Friday, 13th of April, 1979. It was a particularly significant eruption for Vincentians who had never experienced something like that. Those of us who were there, we woke up to the sound of, of, of the volcano exploding. And if you were in the south of the country, in fact, wherever you were, you woke up to this, this growing mushroom and claw column of gray ash that just seemed to expand as high as the eyes could see up and up into the clouds. So nowhere where you were on the island, you didn't know something was happening at the volcano. And immediately realized the volcano was erupting. Immediately most people like myself who lived in the south, who had relatives in the north, got into vehicles and went towards the north to get people out. Um, I happened to be in one of those vehicles, as I said, I was going towards Rosal, where I had a grandmother. Um, and we went to evacuate her with my father. And one of the most, uh, I mean, it's, a, it's as amazing to see that the entire country was unmoved, essentially. People were walking, people were with bits of luggage, people were on the back of vehicles, on donkey. Um, the whole country was moving to the south. As you got closer to it, the, the, the explosions on that morning um, continued periodically, um, and each one pushed this mass of, 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 um, of ash and this growing column up into the air. Um, and as you, got, as you got close to Rosal, of course, you got a bit more excited. You saw, saw a lot more people. Um, we, went, we got to Rosal, and really, people were just scrambling and getting out. Uh, we went for one person, and I believe when the vehicle came back, it was really, I don't know how much people we had in it, but it was just ramped back. With people um, <clears throat> and from then you know things just happened quickly people people moved to the south moved towards evacuation shelters government formal process kicked in um, and the event continued uh, for, for the next three months people were displaced um, most people went back because the explosive phase ended quite quickly but the volcano continued to erupt and it eventually extruded a, a mass of rock we call magma that came up and went on for another six months um, and, and that was 79. 79 was particularly significant. If you lived through it, you, I don't think you, you forgot it. And, and certainly, I think it had an impact on me personally in terms of you know, my, my interest in volcanology. I, I was interested in that kind of thing in science and, and in the earth and, and geography before. But I think after 79, that was when I got into this part where, where I'm now um, a volcanologist and, and one of the people who are working at seismic, essentially keeping a close eye on the volcanoes in the region so that we could alert people if something happens. I think certainly things have changed. We have a much better monitoring system in place. I think the chances of us seeing the build up and, and seeing the process and being able to understand the process is, is much more advanced. So scientifically, I think the science is advanced and that's, that's good. Um, in terms of the country, the country has changed. We now have a you know, an international airport. We now have a lot more people living on the volcano itself in smaller pockets. I think the logistics of, of moving people, of getting people out and the reaction is going to be diff different. Um, so an eruption now, I suspect, is going to cause probably similar kind of disruption and probably even more because of where people and where infrastructure is developed on the country. I think it's going to have a, a much more potentially damaging impact on the country of St. Vincent, even though we are, I think, in a better state to respond to that than we were in 79. I think one of the most significant things impact would be is in terms of regional impact. I think that in, in this time now, we have a lot more air traffic throughout the region and volcanic eruptions. One of the things that they do is put a lot of ash up into the atmosphere. And the impact of that ash is quite negative on air traffic and, and, and airplanes. So I suspect that future eruptions of Sufre and if any eruption of Sufre happens now, is going to have um, potentially greater impact on aviation and air travel throughout the region, not only in St. Vincent. And I think that's the most, most significant impact it would have now, is more in terms of the regional impact. We really need to move to our sitting communities where we, we would like to say that communities are volcano already, certainly those close to the volcano. And, and volcano already means that you understand the hazard, um, understand it such that you know where 
you are relative to the impact of the volcano. So where you are, if you're in an island, you know where the red zones, where the areas that are going to be most affected, where the areas that you could be evacuated from. So if you're in an evacuated zone, you need to know that that might happen and you have some contingency for moving out of the area. Um, so that's, that's part of understanding the hazard. You also, in terms of getting ready, you need to have some plans in place to respond. Um, to respond in terms of the immediate response, that is moving out of the way, getting things packed up and moving out of the way. But also in terms of its potential long-term impact. Volcanic eruptions could go on for a little while, so it means that you have to be prepared to live outside the area that you live for weeks, months, probably even longer than that in the worst case, and to continue to earn a living because a lot of where you live in most of these islands are tied up with your livelihood. So you might be a farmer or fisherman, if you're living on a mountain, you need to find a way in which you could survive off the mountain for a long time. So all of those things mean that if you if you put if you're if you're able to put things in place to be able to live in that circumstance, that is make a living, live safely away from the mountain during the eruptions, that's that's been um, working already and that's the kind of things you need to move towards. The major things to save life in a volcanic eruption is to move off the mountain, evacuation. In terms of sustaining livelihoods, the main thing is to find an alternative way to live outside your, your own space if the eruption goes on. And those are the two key things in terms of safety and, and becoming more ready for volcanic eruptions in the future.